Hey guys, welcome back to Chemistry 1032 Instructional Videos. I am your professor, Dr. Russell Betts, and I'll be guiding you through this chapter, which is chapter three, Compounds, How Elements Combine. Now this is a big deal. This is fundamental chemistry stuff, guys. We really have to understand this stuff. So it's a long chapter. It's going to take a long time to go through it, but we have to go through it, and we have to understand it because it's so fundamental. All right. Now, to understand how atoms bond, you have to understand how electrons work. Now, electrons are extraordinarily complicated. We're going to make it as simple as we can for you guys. You have to understand how electrons arrange themselves around an atom, around a nucleus. Okay? The arrangement of the electrons around an atom is one of the reasons elements form compounds. Okay? It's one of the reasons they do it. Now, the exact location of the electron outside of the nucleus is very difficult to determine, but most of them lie within what's called the electron cloud. All right? There's this thing called the electron cloud. That's where the electrons are, somewhere inside of there. Okay? Because electrons are charged, they are constantly in motion, and they possess kinetic energy because they're moving. All right? Makes sense, yeah? All right. Now, we have to be careful with this. Electrons exist at distinct energy levels. Steps on a staircase or rungs on a ladder, however you want to say it. So they, let me try to explain this to you guys. Electrons can exist on, say, the steps, staircase. I think I have an example here. Electrons can exist here. They can exist here. They can exist here. They can be here or even here. But they cannot be in between ever now imagine you were walking up a staircase you can exist on step number one you can exist on step number two but you can't exist on, on the in-between part like you can't levitate there you can't hover between stairs you're either on the first step or you're on the second step but you're never in between and electrons do the same kind of thing okay they can either be in the first energy level or the second energy level but they can't be between them they can be in the fourth energy level or the third energy level, but they can't be between them. We have to understand that, guys. We have to understand that and be very clear about that, okay? In general, oops, where's my, oops, sorry about that, guys. Here we go. In general, electrons will occupy the lowest energy step first. So when you're filling in an atom's electrons, you will fill the first rung. You will fill the staircase from the bottom, and you'll work your way up. Okay, so if you had a bunch of people and you want to put them on a staircase and you told them we have to fill the bottom rungs of the staircase first because those are the low energy, people will fill the low energy first because, you know, we don't want to walk up the stairs, right? Now, in the Adam's case, the lowest energy level or the lowest staircase, stair step is the closest to the nucleus because that's where the protons are. Okay, remember, electrons are negative. They want to be by the protons. All right? Now, first things first. We have to understand how an atom is built. So let me just try to do that for you. So let's take a blue pen here. And we're going to call that the nucleus. Okay, that blue dot is the protons and neutrons. Okay? Now the first energy level, we'll draw it in green. It's called shell number one or the one shell, that can hold two electrons max. The first energy level of any atom can hold two electrons, and that's it. One more time. The first energy level of any atom can hold two electrons, and that's it. Remember, atoms will fill their electrons from the low energy level first and build up to the high energy levels. Okay? So, if you're filling in the electrons of an atom, you have to fill the first level first. Shell number one, filled first, two electrons. Oh, let's go purple. There we go. There we go. Here is shell number two, or the two shell. And that is eight electrons max. Now, I should be clear here. That's the maximum number of electrons. There could be less. You don't have to fill a shell. Now, before you can go to the next staircase or the next energy level up, you have to fill the, the shell below it. 
But there's nothing saying that I have to have all eight electrons in shell number two. I could have seven. You can have two. You can have none. But you can't have nine. Okay? So the first shell, two maximum. Could be less. Could be one or zero. But it's two maximum. Can't have three in the first shell. The second shell, eight maximum. No problem. And let's go red. This is the three shell. Oop, my battery's getting low, guys. This is the three shell. And that is 18 electrons max. Now, it is most definitely 18 electrons max, right? Let me draw this for you. But we're usually going to stop at 8. Now, don't get me wrong. I shouldn't say max there, sorry. 18, 8 electrons. Now, don't get me wrong. The third shell is most definitely 18 maximum. Um, there's no question about that. But a lot of times, atoms will stop at 8. Okay, when they're filling the third shell, once they get to 8, sometimes they'll stop there. They don't always. They can go beyond that. But a lot of times, they'll stop at 8. So keep that in mind. It is 18. There's no question about it. It's 18 electrons in the third shell. But a lot of times, we stop at 8. This is how it works. Now, being able to locate the number of electrons present in each energy level provides tremendous insight into how the elements in a table or in a period or group are related to each other. Now, elements with the same number of electrons in their highest energy level are in the same group. Let's, let's circle that whole entire statement. You probably want to write it down. Elements with the same number of electrons in their highest energy level are in the same group. Okay? For example, boron and aluminum are both in group 13. They're both in group 13. What does that mean? Well, that means both uh, boron and aluminum have the same number of electrons in their highest energy level. Okay? They happen to have the same number of electrons in their highest energy level. If you look at group 14, all the atoms in group 14 have the same number of electrons in their highest energy level. That's what it means. Okay? So keep that in mind. It's a very, very important, very fundamental thing. Now, let's look at sulfur. We're going to do this as an example. We're going to light, write what's called the electron arrangement for sulfur. So look at the periodic table. Sulfur is in group, as, uh, sorry, has the atomic number of, don't remember, let me find out from my book, 16. which means the number of protons equals 16. The number of electrons equals 16. Okay? So now, we want to deal with the electrons. We don't care about the protons at this point. We want to put the electrons in their arrangement. So remember, the first energy level can hold how many? Two. So we'll just write simply a 2, comma. This is the first energy level, or shell number 1. Now we've put 2 in shell number 1. There's 2 there now. So the first energy level is filled. We have 16 electrons. We've used 2 of them. So now we have 14 left. So now that the first energy level is filled, you go to the second energy level and it can hold maximum eight. We have 14 to deal with, so let's put all eight right there. Now, this is the shell number two, or two shell. Two plus eight is 10, 10 electrons. And we have six more to go, because remember, sulfur has 16 electrons. Two, eight, the third shell can hold 18. We have six left. So all six will go into the third shell. Shell number three. So the electron arrangement of sulfur is 2, 
8, 6. And that should add up to 16, the number of electrons. 2 plus 8 plus 6 equals 16 total electrons. This is the answer right there. Okay? That's how you do electron arrangements. And now it's very simple. It's also very powerful. If you know the electron arrangement, you can tell a lot about an atom. Define, or sorry, determine the electron arrangement for the following elements. First thing we got to do is figure out how many electrons they have. So carbon, I know carbon has six electrons. Oh, I'm sorry. Before I move on, you may want to pause it and try this yourself. In fact, pause it, try it yourself, come back. All right, guys, welcome back. Now, where are we? Carbon has six protons. I'm looking this up on the periodic table. So it has six electrons. Nitrogen has seven electrons. Chlorine has 17 electrons. And calcium has, I believe, 20. There we go. So I just took the atomic number and figured out how many electrons we had. So carbon will be 2, 4. Because carbon only has 6, 2 plus 4 is 6. Nitrogen will be 2, 5. Chlorine will be 2, 8, 7. Total 17. Uh, calcium will be 2, 8, 8, 2. That was the hardest one because we didn't really talk about group uh, the fourth energy level. The fourth energy level can also hold 18. So I kind of tricked you on that one a little bit. But you guys will be all right. That's the hardest one you'll ever have to do. So if you didn't get them all right, um, you might want to review again how to do them. If the only one you got wrong was calcium, you're probably doing all right. All right. The highest energy level that contains electrons is the valence shell. Write that down. That's important. Valence shell. Inside the valence shell are what are known as the valence electrons. So the highest energy level that has electrons in it is called the valence shell. And those electrons are known as the valence electrons. The valence electrons are the furthest from the nucleus. They're the furthest away. They're the, on, the, they're on the frontier. They're the outermost electrons. These electrons combine, do all the magic, to make these things called compounds. All right? The outermost electrons do all the work. The outermost electrons do all the work. The innermost electrons, that are called the core electrons, don't really get involved in anything. So we don't really worry about them too much. We worry more about the valence electrons. Now here's a fun fact. The group indicates the number of valence electrons in an atom for the main group, not transition metals. Transition metals doesn't work. But for every other, uh, for the main group or representative elements, this works fine. Now, the period indicates the outermost energy level containing electrons. That's just how it works. That's how the periodic table is set up. Very powerful. So let's take a look here. This is, uh, well, let me change these numbers a little bit here. This is group 1. It's also called 1A. This is group 2. It's also called 2A. This is group 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, and 18. Now, um, most periodic tables have both numbering systems the old way and the new way. So what does this tell us? This tells us that all of these have one VE, valence electron, okay? All group two have two VE, two valence electrons. Now, in group 13 through 18, you have to ignore the one. Now, if you look at the three, four, five, and six, whatever, A, just ignore the A. In 1, 13 through 18, the other numbering system of the groups, just ignore the 1. So this has 3 valence electrons. And you're getting the idea, I hope. 4 valence electrons. Oops. 5 valence electrons. 6 valence electrons. So you're getting the idea, right? 7 valence electrons. And these two have 8 valence electrons. And helium will have two. You're getting the idea, I hope. If you're in group 18, you have eight valence electrons except for he uh, helium. I'll explain later why helium doesn't have eight. Uh, if you're in group 17, seven valence electrons. 16, six valence electrons. 
15 is 5 valence electrons. 14 is 4 valence electrons. See how I'm just repeating this stuff? That's because it's very important that you can figure out quickly how many valence electrons you have by looking at the periodic table. It makes it very, very simple. Look at the group number. Unless it's a transition metal, this will work. Group 1 has 1 valence electron. Group 2 has 2. Group 13 or 3A has 3. Group 14 has 4. 15 has 5. 16 has 6. 17 is 7. 18 is 8, except for helium, which is 2. Okay? All you got to do is look at the number. Ignore the 1, and that's how many electrons you have. All right? Please keep that in mind. It makes life very easy going down the road. All right. How many valence electrons do the following atoms have? So let's pause the video, take your periodic table, find these elements, figure out how many valence electrons they have just by looking at the table. You could do it with um, electron arrangement. Do it with the periodic table. I'll do it with electron arrangement and show you how they compare. Okay? Pause the video. Try it now. All right, welcome back, guys. Sodium. Let's look at sodium. Sodium is in group one. So sodium has one valence electron. Now let's do the electron arrangement. I'll do it. You guys probably didn't do it, and that's fine. I'll do it. Sodium will be 2, 8, 1. And there's its valence electron, number one. Okay? Sulfur. Sulfur is in group 16. So sulfur has six valence electrons. 2, 8, 6 would be its electron arrangement. And there's six. I'm just using the electron arrangement to prove to you that the group number really is the valence electrons. These are valence electrons. How do I know they're valence electrons? They're, on, they're the last number written. Okay? They're the electrons in the outermost energy level, so they must be valence. There's nothing beyond them. There's nothing here. So those are valence. Calcium. Calcium is in group two, so calcium has two valence electrons. 2, 8, 8, 2. There's my valence electrons right there. Okay, they're the last electrons written in the arrangement. They are the valence electrons. Carbon. Carbon's in group 14. Carbon has four valence electrons. 2, 4. Fluorine's in group 17, so fluorine has seven valence electrons. 2, 7. And there you go. That's the valence electrons. Now, if you didn't get this, or you got one of them wrong, go back and do them all again. It's Practice makes perfect, guys. It really does. And a practice also makes confidence. So make sure you can do this. It's fundamental. This is fundamental. This is a building stone. We have to build upon this knowledge. If this knowledge is fuzzy, the future will be fuzzy. If this knowledge is not fuzzy, the future will be bright. Now, Nobody wants to deal with numbers. Nobody wants to deal with the numbers. No one wants to play around with numbers. People would much rather deal with what's called the electron dot symbol. Now, the valence electrons are, are oftentimes illustrated using what's called the electron dot symbol. Now, oops, sorry guys. I keep doing this. Now, let's talk a little bit about the electron dot symbol. We know, for example, carbon has four valence electrons. But how can I draw that? Chemists like to draw. We're drawing people. How do you draw it? Well, you draw the symbol, carbon, electron north, south, east, and west. Now these are called, oops, let me clean that up a little bit. These are called single electrons. Now they're, they're single and ready to mingle, as we say. Now, why do I say that? Because they're the electrons that make bonds. Single electrons, generally speaking, make bonds. Or, the, or they'll do something interesting. Okay, It's almost always the single electrons that do interesting things. Single, ready to mingle. That's how I kind of remember it. Okay. Now, what about another example? How about um, nitrogen? Nitrogen has five valence electrons. So how do I draw nitrogen? Well, nitrogen, north south, east, west. But that's only four. Where do I put the fifth one? Well, here's the rule. Now, remember this, guys. 
after the fourth valence electron, you have to start pairing them. After the fourth valence electron, you have to start pairing them. So, there you go. And all that is called a lone pair. Again, this, this, and this single electron. All right, guys, this is a lone pair. When you pair electrons, it's called lone pairing. All right, let's do one more. Let's do fluorine. Fluorine has seven valence electrons. Capital F, north, south, east, west, four, five, six, seven. There you go. So fluorine, whoops, oh, goodness, guys, I'm so sorry. Uh, all my data is gone, but let's just finish it with fluorine. Fluorine has three lone pairs and one single electron. Oops. What well, electron? Singular. All right. So sorry, my other day they kind of got erased there. Sorry about that. So that's how that works, guys. Okay, those are those are um, electron dot symbols. If you need some, you know, if that little mishap screwed you up, just rewind the video and watch it again. I don't think it screwed you up. That was a pretty simple topic, really. All right, write the electron dot for the following atoms. It's an example problem, but you guys go ahead and pause it and try it on your own. All right, welcome back. Bromine has seven valence electrons. And magnesium has two valence electrons. So bromine, north, south, east, west, one, two, three, just like fluorine, they're in the same group, so they should look similar. And magnesium, oops, not ME, try that again, MG, there you go. Okay, you can write it like that, or there's other ways you could write it too. You could write this if you want. You know, this is also fine. If, you know, there's other ways to do it. But one is not correct. This would not be okay. Don't draw it like this. Draw the electrons separated. All right? And that's how magnesium is drawn. Here's another one. You try. Write the electron dot symbol for the following. Carbon, chlorine, nitrogen, sodium, and neon. Go ahead and pause the video. See if you can do them on your own. Hey guys, welcome back. I'm sure you got them all right, but let's just go over them together anyway. Carbon, 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 carbon. Carbon has four valence electrons. There you go. Chlorine has seven. There it is. Nitrogen. There you go. Sodium. And neon. There it is. Now, if you had trouble with any of those, go back and watch the video again. It's very simple. Uh, it's fundamental. You have to understand this. Um, I'm sure all of you do. Uh, most people don't have a problem with this, but if you did, just rewatch the video. If you still have trouble, come see me in office hours or go visit the Academic Success Center. Get it straight. All right, uh, we'll stop here for this part of the video, and we'll pick it up in the next video at uh, 3.1, Electron Arrangements and Octet Rules. Very interesting topic coming up, guys. As finally, uh, elements in group 18 or 8A, those are called the noble gases, are chemically inert. They don't like to react with anything unless under extreme conditions. So they're, they're essentially they're non-reactive gases. Okay. Now, noble gases have eight valence electrons except for helium. Now, helium doesn't need eight valence electrons because helium is only filling group. Uh, sorry, shell number one. Shell number one can only hold two electrons. So after a, filled, after a valence shell is filled, an atom is happy. It's very it's somewhat stable, doesn't want to react anymore. Okay, So helium, once it gains two electrons, its valence shell is filled, so it's not going to gain any more electrons. Okay, So helium doesn't obey the octet rule, but the octet rule basically is saying that once a valence shell is filled, no further chemistry will occur. Okay, so helium has two electrons, it's done. Hydrogen has one electron. 
So when hydrogen gains a second one, it's no longer it's no longer in the hunt for the filled octet, filled valence shell. Okay. So helium obeys what's called the duet rule, which means once it once it gets two, it stops. Hydrogen obeys the duet rule. Once it gets two, it stops. All right. Now, for all other atoms, uh, at least in the main group, once an atom possesses eight valence electrons, that is a highly stable state for the atom to be in. So the atom becomes very stable at that point, and this is known as the octet rule, or the rule of eight. Eight valence electrons is a stable state. Doesn't mean unreactive, doesn't mean it won't do other interesting chemistry, they do, but it just becomes a more stable state than not having eight valence electrons. And this is because the valence shell is filled. All right, so we'll leave it here. We'll pick it up next time. I wish you good luck and good chemistry.